And welcome back to San Antonio, the Texas High School Coaches Association Convention here at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Bobby Stotzenberger from TexasSportsProductions.com. And we're joined now by the legend. Now, <laughs> we, you, you're at that age now where we call you legend. <laughs> Danny Padron, he's the head coach of the Antonian Apaches here in San Antonio, but a long, long history of coaching here in uh, in town, and uh, yeah, I I consider you a legend, <laughs> well, and not just that, because Bob. of your age, because of your success and and what you've done for kids over the years. You bet. Well, appreciate that. And I'm one of those kids. You bet. <laughs> Very proud of you guys. Well, uh, it, as good of a football coach as you are, a lot of fo- fo- uh, coaches know this. I yeah. know this. You're are you prouder of being a good football coach or a great math teacher? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to, you know, we used to tell our coaches uh, 100% in the classroom, 100% on the football field. So, uh, yeah, you take pride in, in both of, of your responsibilities. And so, yeah, I was very uh, – I enjoyed the classroom. I enjoyed teaching math and, and uh, of course, football. I'm back at it, so you know how I feel about football. Well, you had a, a long career and with many, many stops at the high school range, uh, rang ranks uh, most notably at O'Connor you were there for many many years and really took that program to to a new level and coach Molesky's maintained that uh, over at O'Connor and then then you take a detour and you go coach college football for a yeah. while now you're back coaching the high schools what how did that all evolve for you <laughs> well you know uh, I kept trying to stay in the high school I really felt like that was where I wanted to be and uh, the opportunity presented itself at Texas Lutheran and and I kept turning them down kept turning them down and finally you know coach said look just meet with our our president and and I did and uh, I thought what the heck you know just go ahead and do it and just you know just sitting down and talking to coach Miller and and the the president uh, at that time uh, just realized that you know what they got the same values and it would be exciting to coach at college, and and so, I don't know. The Lord just kind of guided me that way, and and uh, we were there for seven years, and my son ended up going to Bowling Green State, and so then I thought I was about 65, getting to be 65. Then thought, well, this might be a good time to get out, and so uh, I got out to follow his career, and and of course, you know, they ended up getting fired at, at Bowling Green. And he gets back to, to Texas and high school football, and, and we're up there watching high school football, and I'm thinking to myself, I need to be back coaching, yeah. you know, and, and because that, that's what I do. I mean, I, my hobby is football. I mean, that's 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 what I do. So um, I miss the relationships with the kids, miss the relationships with the coaches, and uh, Antonian was probably the only school I would have accepted. You know, I wanted a Catholic school. Uh, they're right in my neighborhood, and, and uh, our church, you know, a lot of our students go to Antonian, and so it was just a great fit. And band retires, and I'm getting phone calls in January, yeah. you know, and so uh, I thought, is this what I really want to do? I talked to our pastor. You know, I was working at the church at the time, and, and uh, you know, he was really surprised that I wanted to go back into coaching. and But I really felt like, you know, the Lord had a hand in it and uh, just kind of followed it and you know what? We're excited. We had a good year last year, very, uh, very rewarding. So, you know, look forward to again this year. Well, I have a house up in Medina Lake, and guess who one of my neighbors is up there? Brian Dowson. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting out on the front, his front porch with him and Lisa, his wife, and uh, and that's when I learned that you were going to possibly be the head coach. Yeah. At Antonian, this yeah. is before. This is after Van. I it didn't even it didn't really honestly it didn't yeah. cross my mind. I'm like, oh, Danny Padron's coming. Now I don't know if this is a, 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 a you know Dowson story or a true story, <laughs> but he told me that you you said I'm not doing it unless you come with me, Brian. That's one of is, there, is there any truth to that? That's true. <laughs> you know you you really got to have somebody that you can trust on the other side. And right. I said you know I, I told Brian I said you know I wanted to make sure we had somebody that like like I could trust right and Brian was you know we've always been you know good friends and and very you know big competitors mm-hmm. uh, he was at Warren for a long time at Marshall right we were at Clark so back and forth O'Connor and, and Warren so 
Um, you know, I knew that uh, Coach Gus thought a lot of him when he was at TOU. And so, of course, I we had a chance to work with the All-Star game with him, and so it was a no-brainer for me. And I really wanted somebody that uh, – that had been exposed. Of course, he was an offensive guy for the longest time, but then the last two or three years been working defense. So you, you need somebody on the other side of the ball that you can trust. And, and yeah, that's a true story. All right. So uh, you, you pressured him into it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. And but it it's fun, good. though. Yeah. yeah. It's fun because there's there's a big difference in coaching at a private school versus a public school. It is. And, and um, you can kind of really – not that you can at the public schools, but it, 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 you can put more of your focus on, on the game itself, the, the football team. Yeah. Because that's your only responsibility. <laughs> Is that correct? That's true. I mean, uh, that's our responsibility is just football. And, and uh, so the, the people at Antonian have those same values that, that you look for. And and, uh, and I think that's it's just a no-brainer. Uh, so we're, we're excited to be back and with a good staff. You know, Blake Fushak, uh mm-hmm was a holder on from, from, of course, Van Fuchek's son, who played quarterback for us right. at O'Connor. Uh, so he's just like having my son right. uh, on the staff, you know, because that's how close we are. You know, we, you know, I've just thought a lot of him. Being a coach's kid, uh, you know, he's just really a special coach. And, and so we were very fortunate to keep him. Uh, he really, uh, you know, knew everything about Antonian, and so he was. it was easy an easy transition for us with him there. So uh, he's done a great job calling our offense and, and Brian calling the defense. So you start a new job and then a pandemic occurs. Oh, man. So the, you, you thought you, 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 you're, you're on to retirement, right? Yeah. You're retiring and now you're going to just go coach football and then this. Yeah. So the, the challenges were huge right away. Well, you know, I, I interviewed uh, like in March and, and found out that I had the job in March. But they wouldn't go announce it until April 1st. Right. And so it was the longest. And, of course, April 1st come and no announcement. Right. Sometime in May. That was the longest April Fool's joke I've ever been a part of. Yeah, <laughs> no so, kidding. <laughs> and like you said, you know, they didn't announce it. We were trying to get a staff together, put you know, put an offense and defense together, special teams, and, and uh, hadn't had a chance to meet with the kids. And so uh, we had, uh, you know, a chance to meet with the kids, and it was like in June. <laughs> I mean, it's been crazy. So, uh, you pandemic feel, was something. Yeah. Do you feel like you, you're? I mean, you know the kids. You know what's going on now with Antonian, oh, yeah. or yeah. because that was just well, we such a bizarre. You know, I think there's several guys that went to new jobs that yeah. didn't Ron. even know their kids. Ron Ritterman at yep. Alamo Heights, yep. Mark Soto at, at Johnson. Yep. I mean, you at Antonian. Yep. I got to go coach a team that I don't even know. Yeah. Well, that's why having Blake there, yeah. that really helped a bunch. And, and uh, we relied on him for a lot of things. Mike Inko was also another guy that was coaching the varsity. He was the defensive coordinator there for him. And so with that input, it, it really helped us on both sides of the ball. So uh, it was really crazy. It really was. And, and uh, you know, I wouldn't want to go through that again. And, of course, you know, our off season this year was just as bad. I mean, you know, a lot of them were staying home. Right. And so we didn't have them. So we, we spent, you know, the summer conditioning really helped us t- to get back into a conditioning mode, but uh, not, not the what you really wanted because we, we missed. We got him back for spring training. We didn't have that the year before, but uh, we got him back for spring training and, and not as and not in the shape we wanted because, right. you know, you had off seasons. You know how important it is. So, but it was, it's what it is. So most schools are like that. So Zoom's not the way to go for a six, six, <laughs> 66, 67 year old. How old are you now? I'm 60. I'll be 60. Well, I'm 69. Yeah, I'll oh be my 70, gosh! Yeah, See, that's yeah. you don't embrace technology that much, do you? <laughs> no. I, the, no. I mean, I, we we really need to. And I'm t- telling Coach Stade this that we got a lot of catching up to do with these yeah. kids. Yeah. It, it, it's it, a, it, across the board. Well, I, you know, I think the the new rules as far as being able to handle more skill. Uh, during the summer workouts, you know, we never had to do that, and, and they were allowing us to do that now an hour, and that really is helpful. That 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 helped us a little bit on off season. We didn't get everybody, you know, for summer conditioning, but uh, but that did certainly help us. Well, uh, you lose some really talented players. We did from we, from last year. We lost a bunch of good seniors, twenty of them, uh, guys that uh, not only were solid offensively, defensively, but Brian Armstrong. 
may have been one of the best athletes to ever come through Antonia. I'm going to tell you, he is. He was one of the best. Uh, I, I just, you know, for a guy to be so talented, yet he was so humble. You know, he was like Gerard Duke yeah. Douglas. He was the same type of guy, you know, uh, really a talented guy and, and never acted like it. You know, he was he worked his rear end off just like everybody else. and uh, just, a, just a delight. We just wish that uh, – you know, had him for another couple of years. You, you didn't redshirt him? Well, I, I tried. I tried to hold these guys out <laughs> for graduate Rudy, Rudy did, too. <laughs> we, we thought maybe four or five of those guys we could get to stay around. So You know, you know it's funny that, um, and you all have such a good staff there, you know, Coach uh, Coach Colin Beck. I mean, you guys go back to the O'Connor yeah. days, and now he's yeah. the baseball coach over there at Antonian. And, and uh, of course, Rudy Bernal was a legend at you bet. Lanier. Still, he's still and now he, he's <laughs> yeah, he's done you know, a great a, job. A, a, there's a guy right there that that you just feel really good about. Yeah. That you know, he he took a lot of lesser teams and made them good over at at Lanier, and even took a couple of them to the state tournament. Yeah. But for him to get a chance to coach the talent that yeah. he got to coach the last several years at Antonia, and then prove how good he is at what he does. I mean. Well. That, there was, he, there's he not also, a more there's not a more deserving person than yes Rudy. sir I agree he's he's done a lot with that yeah and and you know they they had some talent but more so because of his coaching he he really got the best out of those at those guys that were talented he really got the best out of them so he's you know, I think Antonio's very fortunate to have him all right tell us about 2021 and Antonian football what do you what are your expectations well we got some challenges uh, no question about it you know we're our goals are for a winning season that's our our number one goal we need you know, we kind of set a realistic goal uh, we always want to try to get in the playoffs and then a, a district Eight championship central <laughs> yeah that's, there's always that's always that's always there you right know, and, and uh, so yeah it, it's a uh, you know what you know i think the idea of district championship is a reality we have to beat central and you have right. to beat houston st thomas and then there's St. Pius, and, and you've got, uh, we've got several, you know, other schools, Concordia, right. Tomball, Concordia, and, and uh, Katie St. John's, right. and, of course, San Antonio Christian uh, with Coach McCabe there. And, and, you know, there'll be some challenges for us. So we'll lack depth. we got a lot of guys going to go, going play both ways. Um, had two transfer quarterbacks come in, uh, one from Randolph and one from Bernie, a champion, Bernie champion, and uh, – those two guys are really battling. Uh, we have a freshman who's going to be a sophomore quarterback, who is an unbelievable athlete. Just, you know, they we had a freshman team that went undefeated. We say undefeated. They they lost the first game to Floresville. Uh, we threw the ball down to the five yard line. We would have won it, you know, if he got in. Um, but that was a game they which they alternated quarterbacks. Right. That first game, freshman, they were just trying to find him. And after that, the, the, the young man just went, I mean, he Took off. he beat Central Catholic twice. And, I mean, they scored, I know he kept like three or four touchdown passes a game, you know. And so he's, he's a great athlete. He'll play for sure on defense. And then if he's the guy at quarterback, then we might have to make an adjustment there. But, but the two senior quarterbacks are really battling. Uh, we've got some receivers. We've got a receiver from Brandeis, Ricky Gonzalez, uh, who's really talented. So, uh uh, a lot of a lot of that uh, happens. So, we're, you know, we've got some some challenges. We'll just say it that way. You, you're always ready to meet the challenges. I know <laughs> yeah, you. You well bet enough. we are. You bet. Danny, good so. to see you as always. All right, take care, Mom. Coach Padron, Danny Padron, the Antonian Apaches head coach here in San Antonio. We'll be back with more from uh, Texas High School Coaches Association convention in San Antonio in just a moment here on TexasSportsProductions.com. <laughs> 